The sport of boxing, where two men enter a ring, fight with their fists and heart over their livelihoods and pride. Multiple generations have now seen the greats of the time battle it out. Joe Fraser vs Muhammad Ali 1971, the famous Rumble in the Jungle 1974, and hell, even the second KSI vs Logan Paul fight in 2019. All three of these fights left a significant impact on the crowds who witnessed them. But today, I want to take a good look at one of the greatest fights of the 2000s. Go, time in, let's go. Tony Wiggs checking the tape on the left glove of cut. Before we move on, we've got to slow down quite a lot. You're looking at Diego Corrales in the white trunks and Jose Luis Castillo in the red. These two men just gave the fights of the life in front of a packed out last. What this Las Vegas crowd is about to see unfold might just be regarded as one of the best boxing finishes in history. But before we move on to that, I feel this fight deserves a lot of background. First, I'd like to introduce the late and great Diego Corrales. Born to a Colombian father and Mexican mother, Corrales grew up in the notorious Oak Park district of Sacramento. The area was known and regarded with a lot of gang violence, which sadly he got into at the age of 13. He also saw his best friend die in a drive-by shooting when he was 15, and that stuff I'm pretty sure changes you. And change him it did. He spent 14 months in prison due to a charge of domestic battery. Upon getting out, Corrales decided to put all that aggression he had into the sport of boxing. He started going for amateur bouts, and believe me when I say this, he finished his amateur career with 105 wins and only 12 losses. All that traction would not go to waste, as Diego ended up being one of the greatest fighters to enter the 2000s, and ended up landing a super fight against Floyd Mayweather Jr. Diego ended up losing the fight due to TKO in round 10. Although in the process he had earned the respect of millions. Since that loss, everyone saw a new Diego. He earned the nickname of Diego Chico Corrales and just started winning and winning. He came up to a record of 39 wins and two losses leading up to the fight, also winning the WBO title in the process. And that was more or less everything leading Diego into this fight. Now let's take a look at his opponent, Jose Luis Castillo. Jose Luis Castillo was born in Sonora in Mexico. He he was nicknamed the fearsome due to his amateur fights being very scrappy and him always winning no matter how bad of a state he got in. And all of this attention in the amateur rounds led to him going pro and fighting some huge fights. And just like his opponent Diego, he ended up securing a fight against Floyd Mayweather. This fight was actually one of the most controversial fights he's ever fought. Just because of the fact everyone considers this fight the fight which Floyd Mayweather lost. Floyd Mayweather was trashed for about 12 rounds by Castillo only for a horrible unanimous decision call in favor of Mayweather. But here's the thing with Castillo, instead of crying over an unfair loss, this man just kept on working. All the passion and dedication shown by this man is what changed him from a prize fighter into one of the greatest lightweights ever. This guy came into the match with a record of 52 wins and only 6 losses also holding the WBC title at the same time now that i've explained the background of both our fighters let me go in more detail of the situation here as i told you guys diego was the wbo champion with castillo being the wbc world champion this meant one thing this was a unified title fight these men weren't just fighting for one title they were fighting for two after much wait the fight finally commenced Both men battled each other with great combinations for the first few rounds, but the major blow of the fight came in round four when a cut appeared above Castillo's face. Corrales, who again for reference was in the white trunks, also took many blows to the face, and his eyes ended up developing huge welts. And in round seven, his eye infamously swelled so much that it shut. The reason this fight is known so famously is because of the fact that both of these men didn't treat it like a boxing match. They treated it like a bloody war. By the time of round 9, both these men just stood half dead except not one of them had hit the canvas even once. And now time for the main event of the fight. Welcome to the best round 10 in boxing history. Lightweight title fight. Oh. The most shocking part about this fight is that in round 10, Corrales got dropped like this twice, not once, twice. And both those times, this guy got up from the floor at the count of 9 and 8. And with two miraculous recoveries, Corrales was somehow back in this fight, willing to win it as much as his opponent. Now we've gone full circle and covered everything we need to know about this fight. All what's left is the conclusion. So ladies and gentlemen, enjoy.
Castillo's in trouble. Leak steps in and a fight. That was it. Corrales had done it, becoming a unified champion overnight and giving everyone in the boxing world a night to remember. Tragically, that was the last ever fight Corrales ever won. He died to a motorcycle incident in 2007. As per Castillo, he ended up beating Corrales in the rematch and went on to become one of the greats in boxing ever, concluding his career around 2012. This video... As a concluding note, I'd like to thank everyone who's kept watching this video right till the end. I really appreciate all the support, whatever I get. I know this video will probably not do so well, but that doesn't matter. I got to document one of the best boxing matches and honor one of the best legacies in Corral. Even though I wasn't born when this fight happened, it still inspires me a lot. Just because of the fact that he was dealing with personal demons. He didn't just win the physical fight, he won the personal one as well. Lastly, rest in peace, Diego Corrales.